Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I'm pleased to rise in this House to speak on Bill C-84, an act to amend the Criminal Code, Bestiality and Animal Fighting, animal rights, updated animal cruelty laws, and anything to do with uh, taking care of our animals are very important to uh, Davenport residents, and so I felt it was really important for me to speak to this bill. I've received hundreds of letters over the years uh, since I've been elected uh, and uh, a number of calls to action around improving our animal cruelty laws uh, around uh, many of the issues that have been talked about in the House uh, while we've had the, this discussion around Bill C-84. But before I, I begin my formal remarks, I want to acknowledge the work of my colleague from each, Be Beaches East York, who introduced Bill C-246 two years ago. It was a legislation that was intended to, to modernize many, many aspects of Canada's animal cruelty laws. And while this legislation was ultimately defeated, I did vote in favour of it, uh, not only because of the overwhelming support of this bill by Davenport residents, but because I personally felt the time had come for us to actually, uh, on a fairly big scale, uh, um, update, uh, update the legislation in a number of different ways. And I will say to you, Mr. Speaker, that it was partly due to uh, uh, the member's uh, efforts, to his efforts, uh, that the Minister of Justice and, and uh, the Attorney General of Canada committed to reviewing animal cruelty offences. She engaged in a broad public consultation that has led to where we are right now in Bill C-84, and that is what I'm going to be speaking on today. And I'm going to focus on uh, a couple of areas. Um, I think we can agree that bestiality, its links uh, to child sexual abuse, cruelty to animals, and the issue of animal fighting are major concerns in Canada. And Bill C-84 proposes to do a few things, including provide a clear definition for bestiality, as well as strengthen Canada's animal fighting laws, uh, strengthen as well as modernize Canada's animal fighting laws. So I'm going to focus on these two issues that I know has broad support. First, the Bill C-84 fills a gap identified as a result of the 2016 Supreme Court of Canada's decision in the case of R versus DLW in relation to the prohibition of acts of bestiality. In the DLW decision, the Supreme Court was asked to interpret the scope of the bestiality offence under the Criminal Code. And surprisingly, it was found that the Criminal Code currently does not contain a definition of bestiality. In considering the origins and historical evolution of the common law bestiality provision, the court stated that penetration has always been one of the essential elements of the offence. The court refused to interpret bestiality in a way, in such a way as to broaden its scope, saying that the, def the decision to broaden the definition falls squarely within the responsibility of Parliament. The Supreme Court decision in the DLW case allowed us to identify a gap in the law that the, BC, uh, that the bestiality offenses uh, in force do not apply to persons who commit sexual acts with non-penetrating animals, even in the presence of children or with children. Mr. Speaker, many stakeholders, including child and animal advocates and even some provincial governments, urged the federal government to act on the DLW decision and to fill deficiencies identified by the Supreme Court. The First Amendment proposed in this bill is therefore to define the term bestiality in the Criminal uh, Code to prohibit any contact for a sexual purpose with an animal. This proposed legislative amendment would serve several important purposes, such as the protection of children and other vulnerable persons who may witness or be forced to witness an act of bestiality. The proposed legislative amendment contains a strong public safety component. Research shows that violence, including sexual violence against women and children, and violence against animals are not separate and distinct issues. Rather, they are part of a broader context of violence that is inextricably linked. In fact, Mr. Speaker, research conducted by the Canadian Centre for Children Protection on images of child sexual exploitation on websites reported that between 2002 and 2009, it, th this showed that 35% of all Im images that were analyzed involved serious sexual assault, including bondage, sexual servitude, torture, and bestiality. This, de this data demonstrated that there's a clear link between bestiality, child sexual abuse, and other forms of violence. In addition, Mr. Speaker, since the DLW decision, the case law analysis on this issue also reveals numerous cases 
where offenders convicted of possession of child pornography were sadly viewing images of children aged 1 to 16 engaged in bestiality acts. Case law further demonstrates that when sexual violence against a child involves an animal, the level of criminal behavior may be particularly serious and acts of sexual violence committed do not always involve penetration. So since the DLW decision, bestiality offenses under the criminal code do not apply in cases where the offender commits sexual acts with non-penetrating animals. The impact is that animals are only protected from non-penetrative sexual acts by persons when the sexual act causes physical injury to the animal and is therefore an offence for cruelty to animals. Likewise, children are only protected from being compelled to commit or witness acts of bestiality without penetration when other sexual offences against the child apply. So, Bill C-84 proposes to define bestiality, fills this gap by making it clear that all acts of, that all acts of sex with animals are prohibited under the bestiality provisions of Canada, regardless of the circumstances. In other words, society has no legitimate interest in allowing people to commit sexual acts with animals, especially in the presence of children or with their participation. The bill proposes to define bestiality in these terms, any contact for a sexual purpose with an animal. The meaning of the sentence is well understood and established in law. This expression is found in several other provisions of the criminal code, such as child pornography, luring on the internet, and making sexually explicit material available to a child. In the 2001 Sharp decision, the Supreme Court of Canada interpreted the sentence in the context of the child pornography offence to mean that the act view objectively was committed for the sexual gratification of the involved child. It would be noted that the proposed definition is clearly not intended for animal breeding activities such as artificial insemination. Mr. Speaker, I would now like to highlight the provisions in this bill to strengthen Canada's, Canada's animal fighting laws. At the moment, the criminal code prohibits anyone from encouraging, assisting, or assisting in the fighting or harassment of animals and anyone who constructs, maintains an, an area for cockfighting on the premises that it owns or occupies, or to permit such an area to be constructed, maintained, or guarded on those premises. This bill would ensure that all activities contributing to animal fighting are prohibited and that all animals are entitled to the same protection. This will be achieved by amending Section 445.1 of the Criminal Code to prohibit a wider range of activities such as promoting, organizing and participating in animal fights. In addition, Bill C-84 would ensure that Section 447 prohibits all areas of animal fighting and not only those that are, are committed to cockfighting. While there are no reliable statistics on the extent of animal fighting in Canada, given their cl clandestine nat nature, we know that animal fighting activities are often related to organized crime, including illegal gambling, trafficking, illicit drugs, and weapons. Although cockfighting has become a thing of the past in Canada, the incidence of other forms of animal fighting, particularly those including dogs, has increased. The animal fighting offence reforms proposed in this bill would achieve a number of important goals, including the following two. They would make it clear that all forms of animal fighting are prohibited and strengthen our ability to bring to justice those who commit these heinous crimes and track the number of cases. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to point out that the broadening of the scope of animal welfare offences does not involve legitimate activities such as hunting, training or the use of dogs for protection purposes. Rather, it targets acts of gratuitous violence that have no place and no legitimate purpose in our country. Although this is a necessarily this is a relatively short bill, the proposed amendments are necessary to fill real gaps in the criminal law. Mr. Speaker, in short, this bill is part of the firm commitment of the Minister of Justice uh, to examine and strengthen uh, the uh, animal cruelty laws. I hope that all members of Parliament will join me in supporting the proposed reforms and encourage all members of the House to unanimously support the speedy passage of Bill C-84. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to uh, thank the member for her speech. And uh, as I uh, asked the, the previous speaker, I, I just want to reiterate, you know, this is a bill that was based on a 
private member's bill that was kind of an omnibus bill about uh, animal welfare, cruelty to animals, and perhaps it tried to do too many things at once. And so the government has taken two very narrow, very easy uh, parts of that bill and put it into C84. Uh, and as my uh, colleague from Long Island said, it was, it's sort of like motherhood and apple pie. Of course, everybody here is going to agree with that. But why didn't they do this somewhat, perhaps a little more difficult work of broadening that scope to other real animal cruelty issues around the care uh, of animals without uh, getting onto the, the problems with you know, fishers, hunters, uh, uh, trappers, agriculture, you know, those people doing their business in proper ways we could easily have language in there that protects those activities while really getting at true animal cruelty, uh, which this bill doesn't cover at all, even though she seems to, in her speech, she seemed to suggest that it did. It's only about bestiality and animal fighting, two things that we can all agree here are not proper things for Canadians to do, but we should have tackled a broader subject here. Member for Davenport. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for his question, and uh, I want to say I share his concern. Um, first, I would say that to me, uh, while this only addresses uh, two areas, I believe they're two important areas for us to address. Uh, I think that, th that the consultation uh, was done very well, and I think that we've landed in exactly the place that we needed to, to be. I will say that, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my speech, I did support uh, the uh, the, the bill uh, 246 that uh, the member from Beaches East York uh, did uh, introduce into the House two years ago, I would like to see uh, far more ag aggressive uh, work done in terms of protecting uh, our animals, uh, in, in terms of looking at a lot of the, uh, the cruelty that have been inflicted on animals for years. I'm not going to stop uh, uh, pushing uh, our government to do better, for us to do more. Uh, it's something that's important, uh, not only for Davenport residents, but also to myself. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments?